A bandpass active filter is shown here realized using uh, two op amps and only single supply. We want to show that its magnitude response looks like this, as is shown, omega radian per second on x-axis, and then the center of the uh, peak value for the magnitude response omega naught is equal to 1 over C rad, two, rad R2 times R4 if R4, which is this resistor shown here, is considerably practically less than R3 and R1 as it is shown here, like factor of 100. So if that is the case, then show this. Okay, uh, the easiest way to prove this, assuming our amps are properly biased, linear region of operation not saturated, is um, assuming that, so I'm making the assumption that uh, there is single supply applied to op amp like the supply here, and then the other side grounded, and so on and so forth. So these op amps are properly biased. Now you can see that we also have a V supply here, and then 100k, 100k. So effectively, V supply divided by two will show up at this node, which is on the positive terminal, input terminal of the two op amps. So effectively, all this stuff here are just DC biasing the, these two op amps properly to so that the DC voltage at the positive input terminal of the two op amp is at V supply divided by two, given the 100k, 100k. So for AC analysis, for the uh, analysis of uh, the behavior of V out over V in for this circuit, I just make the assumption that the DC is properly biased by this circuit. And for simplicity, I'm going to just remove these uh, DC bias portion. And with that, circuit actually becomes simplified. For AC analysis, it's as if the positive terminal AC wise is grounded. So uh, positive terminal is grounded. Uh, and therefore, the AC voltage preference on positive input terminal of these two op amps, as long as op amps are in linear region of operation, 0, 0 enforces because of virtual short that the negative terminal also has zero voltage as well. So uh, that's one interesting observation. Now, uh, the other interesting to simplify observation to simplify is, as you can see here, this is a in simple inverting amplifier. And uh, as you know, the gain of uh, simple inverting amplifier is just negative feedback resistor, which is R6 divided by R5. So uh, the gain for this portion is just negative R6 over R5. And by gain, I mean the voltage from here to here. So I can, let's keep this gain value, but what I can effectively say is the voltage at this node is just V out. Uh, let me clean up the bias because I already talked about it, no need to make it busy. So. All I'm trying to say is the voltage at this node is just the V out divided by G. Because from here to go to V out, we uh, are observing a gain of G. Okay, what is the benefit of that? Well, this node is the same as this node. So effectively, this node is V out divided by gain, which in this case, as you can see, just for reference, since R6 is 120K and R5 is 40K, Therefore, 120 divided by 40 is 3, so the gain is negative 3 for this inverting amplifier. So effectively, if you want to simplify, is negative V out divided by 3. But it is V out divided by G. Okay, so let's write a simple KCL for this uh, node X with a voltage Vx. So this node is X and the voltage is Vx. Now, I'm going to just write a simple KCL. So this current going from input to X and this current going from output via a feedback loop to X should be equal to, uh, I'm going to use a different color, should be equal to the sum of this current plus this current plus this current. The three currents that are going out should be equal to the sum of the two currents that nominally are going in. So let's write the KCL then. I'm going to write the KCL at node X. And uh, when you do that, let's also keep in mind that interestingly, because of the virtual short of op amp that forces this node to have zero voltage, and then nothing can flow through the op amp 
input terminal because of impedance, imp, imp, infinite impedance of the uh, linearly operating ideal op amp, this current should only flow this way. So because of that, effectively, I can write an interesting equation here. That equation is Vx minus 0 divided by 1 over Cs, which means Vx times Cs. So let me remove this uh, confusing mark here. OK, uh, so all I'm saying is Vx minus 0 times Cs should be equal to 0 minus V out over G divided by R2. So this current should be equal to that current. So effectively, minus V out uh, over R2G. This is uh, equation number one, and it's simply obtained, as I said, by setting, by saying that this current should be equal to this current, because nothing can go into op amp. And that sort of KCL at this node translate to this equation one. Keep that in mind. Now, let's try the KCL at, at node x. So V in minus Vx divided by R1, V in minus Vx divided by R1, and then plus V out minus Vx divided by R3, V out minus Vx divided by R3, and then should be equal to Vx minus 0 over R4. That's this carrot. So Vx divided by R4, and then plus Vx minus 0 over 1 over Cs, so Cs times Vx. And uh, fi finally, uh, Vx minus V out over G over 1 over Cs, so it's plus Cs times Vx, um, and then minus V out over G. That's the KCL number 2, writing a KCL at node x. Now, this is equation number 2. If you combine 1 and 2 in the sense that substitute Vx in equation 2 using the relationship between Vx and V out from equation 1, and then you end up with a one-line equation that only has V in and V out, which is exactly what we were trying to find. And if you just simplify it, you get to this very neat outcome after you just do the algebraic work and then you get to this outcome. I'm going to just write the outcome. So V out over V in, which uh, as a function of S, because we are writing uh, in Laplace domain or S domain. So if we refer to it as H of S or transfer function of input to output for this uh, active filter, it will become something like this, negative R2 over R1 times G by G, I mean this thing that I wrote before. So let's not forget about it. The gain of the inverting amplifier, the second stage, and then uh, times Cs. Divide by. OK, what do we get in the denominator? If you again simplify, you get 1 over R1 uh, plus 1 over R3 plus 1 over R4. OK, and uh, plus uh, you get 2 plus R2 over R3, G, and then Cs. And uh, for the last term in denominator, you get R2 C squared S squared. That's the transfer function, and you can see that it's first-order polynomial in numerator and second-order polynomial in denominator. Now, interesting, uh, when you set in transfer function, when you set S equal to J omega, uh, so that you're trying to analyze the frequency response, uh, we get omega square here, we get omega here, and nothing there, and omega here. When you set omega to zero, it means DC, and you can see that because omega zero is the only component, in, omega is the only component in numerator, setting omega to zero, it will kill the transfer function. So transfer function officially at frequency zero is zero. So nothing can pass at DC and low frequency. 
when you set s or omega to infinity, then denominator goes to infinity and much faster than numerator because of its uh, uh, power 2. And as a result, the whole transfer function will go to 0 again. So nothing at super high frequency passed through the filter. Therefore, filter is definitely a band pass filter. Uh, and intuitively, it makes sense that super low frequency two caps are open. And because two caps are open, the zero voltage, nothing from input goes to output. The zero voltage at the negative terminal uh, loops back to output and then goes to out. So output is zero. When uh, the frequency is super high, the caps are short. When the caps are short, effectively, this zero is shorted to the loop of cap back to output and then it will set the final output to zero. So again, at super high intuitively, a super high frequency output is zero. Now, what is this transfer function is trying to tell us? Well, when you set S equal to J omega, and then you solve uh, by just setting and trying to find what maximizes function by taking derivative of H of J omega with respect to omega, you end up with finding a very interesting outcome. You end up with finding that um, the only way uh, the maximum frequency you can find is one solution, which then would say omega zero or omega naught squared is one over R two C squared times one over R one plus one over R three plus one over R four. So you, this can be easily proved. Just uh, this can be proved super easily. Just uh, you have to just go through the algebraic calculation. Now, when the assumption that is given here is valid, which is according to the numbers, it's valid. R4 much less than R1 and R3. R4 is 1k. R3 is 200k. R1 is 100k. So really, R4 is much less than R1 and R3. In this uh, last portion. R, 1 over R4 is by far dominant. If that is the case, then 1 over R1 plus 1 over R3 approximately goes away compared to uh, R1 over R4. And then because of that, we definitely can see that we get what we wanted, which is this ask. Omega 0 is 1 over C uh, times rad R2 R4. Now, so that is proven. Um, again, as I said, approximately when R4 is much smaller than R1 and R3, we can get to this request or this thing that was asked to be proven. Okay, so this is now done. Now, the last thing I want to do is, uh, now that we know this, uh, interesting, at the, when we have this proof, it means at exactly omega zero, at exactly omega zero, interestingly, take a look at the transfer function. At exactly that frequency, this component uh, counteracts this component. You know, when you set omega zero, which is in S equal to J omega, when you set omega zero to this value, then R two C squared S squared becomes exactly negative of this value. So these two cancel out each other at omega zero, and the only component in the denominator becomes two plus R two over R three G times C S. Uh, so all I'm trying to say is, uh, if I can write here very quickly, uh, H of J omega naught becomes effectively, so exactly just at omega naught, become negative R2 over R1 G C on J omega, and this center component in the denominator only remains, so CS and CS cancel out, and therefore it becomes negative R2 over R1 times G, and divide by 2 plus let me make sure that, that you're seeing it. So divide by 2 plus, as you can see, R2 over R3G. So it will be R2 over R3 and then G in denominator. Okay, uh, given the values that are provided here, meaning uh, G is negative 3, R2 is equal to R1, so therefore R2 over R1 is 1 negative negative 3 is positive 3. So all I'm trying to say is this value become 3 over and the denominator it's 2 plus r2 over r3. r2 over r3 is 0.5 and g is 3. So it become 
2 minus 1.5, so you get plus 0.5 in denominator. Therefore, it becomes 6. So the question here, one of the questions, that what is the peak magnitude response at omega naught, center of the band pass, uh, pass band is 6 exactly in this example, given the given numbers linearly. So if you want to translate that into dB, you have to take a 20 log 10 out of this guy. Um, then you get the value that you want. Okay, um, so that also we found it. And uh, um, one last thing is just looking at the, um, at the response of this system when you try it in MATLAB, let's say. So I have already prepared and tried it. So copy paste to your view here. This is what you're going to see. So let me just uh, do it this way. OK, so this is the view of this is the view of the magnitude response, again, linear scale. And uh, all I'm trying to show you is if you take a look at uh, the x-axis, which is the omega in radian per second uh, from frequency of 10 radian per second, which is roughly on the order of 2 hertz and uh, up to 10 to the 5 or 100,000 radian per second, as expected, we can see that the peak of, this is the response of this, uh, the out over V in response of this bandpass filter. It is confirming that this bandpass is expected. And the omega naught or omega zero is 10,000 radian per second. And that's exactly matching uh, 1 over C over rad or R to R4 formula. Just try it. C in this case is 0.01 microfarad, which is 10 to the negative 8. And then R2 is 10 to the 3, which is 1K, so R4. And then R2 is 100K, which is 10 to the 5. So denominator under rad is 10 to the 8. And then um, after you take care of the uh, square root, it becomes 10 to the 4. And then C is 10 to the negative 8. So obviously, it become, the whole answer will become for omega naught is 10 to the 4, which is exactly matching what I just got from MATLAB when I tried this simulation. So 10 to the 4, 10,000 radian per second is the center omega naught for this specific example, uh, which, which follows this formula. And then the peak, I'm going to show you the peak. Peak is exactly as we expected. It's 6. 10 to the 0 is 1. And then you can see that the scales are shown. So you count the scales and you get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. The 6 is the peak that is shown here, exactly matching what we found theoretically. Uh, and you can see that at uh, super low frequencies, what's going on. And, and then at super high frequencies, what's going on. At super low frequencies, we are effectively, uh, the denominator is a constant because it's S very small. And then you can see we are growing at uh, 20 dB per decade. And then after we hit the uh, center of the, uh, around the center of the uh, pass band, we get to um, faster rising and falling. And then on the order of uh, much um, considerably larger than 20 dB per decade. And then when we get away again at higher, much higher frequency, the uh, dominant component is R2C2 S squared to in denominator. And therefore it become again 20 dB per decade uh, drop uh, as expected at high, much higher frequency above the center of the passband. I hope that this example is helpful in terms of seeing a practical single supply design based on two ideal open for a band pass filter and then how we find the transfer function uh, given that especially this circuit has a feedback loop and uh, what how can we find the center of the passband.